Howdy, my name is Michaela Sebastian, and I am a second year veterinary student at the Texas A&M College of Veterinary Medicine and Biomedical Sciences. And today on behalf of the PEER program, we are going to talk about the anatomy of the tooth and the different types of teeth among species. Let's begin. Throughout the video, there will be pop quiz questions. For each question, pause the video and think about your answer, or you can wait for the answer. It is up to you. This is our warm up question. Which of the following is a function of teeth? The correct answer is A. First, let's get familiar with classifying teeth. Incisors are located in the anterior of the mouth and are used to pick up and cut food. Some species, like the zebra, also use their teeth for grooming. Canines are also located in the anterior of the mouth and are used in self-defense and to tear up food. Premolars and molars are located in the posterior of the mouth and are referred to as cheek teeth. Their main function is to grind food into smaller pieces. Now let's dive into the anatomical structures of a tooth. Note that there are two types of teeth, brachydont and hypsodont. We will look at their differences in a moment, but note that for simplicity, we will look at the structure of a brachydont tooth. When you look at the outer layer of the tooth, it is divided into three main parts. The crown is the part of the tooth that is visible above the gut line. The neck is the constricted part of the tooth located at the gum line. The root is the part of the tooth we can't see because it is beneath the gum line. Depending on what type of tooth we look at, whether it's an incisor, a canine, a premolar, or a molar, each could have a single root or multiple roots. The inner layers of the tooth consist of hardened substances as well as nervous and vascular structures. The pulp cavity is the innermost layer of the tooth and it supplies nerves for sensing touch, heat, and cold, and blood vessels that supply the tooth. The next layer is dentin, which is a tissue that covers the pulp cavity. Enamel is the layer that covers the crown of the tooth, and it is the hardest substance in the body, which is a good thing considering how much we need our teeth. Cementum is the layer that covers the root of the tooth. With this in mind, if you look at the location of the gum line, then you can correctly state that there is a small transition from cementum to enamel between the root and the crown of the tooth. In veterinary medicine, we refer to this as the cemento-enamel junction, which can help us determine the health status of teeth, especially in x-rays. The periodontum is another term for tissues that surround each tooth. The alveolar bone is what surrounds each tooth in the mandible and maxilla. There is a periodontal ligament that connects the alveolar bone to the tooth, which is why, unless you experience some form of trauma to the mouth or you have a diseased tooth, your teeth will never fall out. And finally, the gums, which are the mucosal tissue that covers the mandible and maxilla. Your gums often indicate your general health. For example, if your gums are red, it could mean you have some inflammation. Which of the following is a cheek tooth? You may pause the video and think about your answer or wait for the answer to show up. The correct answer is A. Remember that premolars and molars are referred to as cheek teeth while incisors and canines are referred to as anterior teeth. Name the structure in the image on the right. The correct answer is D. Enamel is the hardest substance in the body and it covers the crown. Dentin is not correct because it is covered by enamel. Pulp cavity is not correct because it is the innermost layer and cementum covers the root, not the crown. Let's move on to types of teeth. 
Brachydont teeth are common in dogs, cats, and humans. The word literally means short crown because the crown is much shorter compared to the roots. This type of tooth erupts during the early stages of life and they remain in the mouth as they are through life. Factors like disease, trauma, or old age might impair the health of these teeth and cause them to fall out. Dental care in the form of brushing the teeth is important in maintaining a healthy mouth. For more info, see our video on dental health in veterinary medicine. Hypsodont teeth are a little different than brachydont teeth in that they have longer crowns and shorter roots. This type of tooth is found in horses and ruminants. Unlike brachydont teeth, they continuously erupt throughout life, so they need to be floated or filed down by a veterinarian at least annually. Hypsodont teeth have a slightly different arrangement than the layout we looked at with brachydont teeth. For example, the crown and the enamel usually extend below the gum line, hence making the crown longer than the root. The cementum layer covers the entire tooth. Also, the hypsodont tooth does not have a neck or any constricted portion. Note the layering order of the dentin and pulp cavity are the same as with brachydont teeth. If you have a horse, you're already familiar with how a horse can be aged according to their teeth. If you look at the horse's teeth from the lateral view or from the side, you can determine their age by the shape of the incisors. In general, a younger horse will have shorter, wider teeth. A middle-aged horse will have square-shaped teeth, and an older horse will have longer, narrow teeth. You can also look at the incisor teeth from the dorsal or ventral view, that is, looking up or down at the teeth. Younger horses have oval-shaped teeth. Middle-aged horses have round to triangular teeth, and older horses have triangular to biangular teeth. The cup or infundibulum is an infolding of cementum and enamel. It can be found in horses under eight years of age. After eight years of age, the cup is worn off and disappears. Then the pulp cavity or dental star become evident. Look at this image on the bottom and note both the changes in shape and arrangement of the teeth as a horse ages. What is the difference between brachydont and hypsodont teeth? The correct answer is C. Hypsodont means long crown and brachydont means short crown. Hypsodont teeth continuously erupt through life, but brachydont teeth do not do this. Dogs and humans have brachydont teeth, but horses and ruminants have hypsodont teeth. Which of the following is true regarding how to age a horse? The correct answer is D. The cup can be found in horses under eight years of age. Younger horses have short, wide teeth with an oval shape. Middle-aged horses have square teeth with a round to triangular shape, and older horses have long, narrow teeth with a triangular to biangular shape. We're now going to learn how to count teeth. The triadin system is the numbering system veterinarians use to count teeth. Teeth are divided into four quadrants, from upper right to lower right, and are numbered one through four for permanent teeth and five through eight for deciduous teeth. You can try this now. Look at your pet's face and make a clockwise motion with your finger, starting from the upper right side of their mouth and stopping at the lower right side of their mouth. If you have a puppy or a kitten, count five, six, seven, and eight. If you have an adult dog or cat, count one, two, three, and four. Look at this picture on the right. You'll note that for each quadrant, dogs have three incisors, one canine, and four premolars. They have two top molars and three bottom molars. This means an adult dog can have a total of 42 teeth. Remember this rule of thumb 
from the triadin system. O4s are canines and O9s are the first molars. This rule applies to all species. Cats, like dogs, have three incisors and one canine per quadrant. However, they only have three top premolars and two bottom premolars. They also only have one molar per quadrant. This means an adult cat should have 30 teeth total. Horses also have three incisors and one canine per quadrant. They have three to four premolars and three molars per quadrant. This means a horse can have 40 to 42 teeth. Horses sometimes may have a first premolar, or what we know as a wolf tooth. They are usually removed because of concerns with how it will affect a horse's behavior, especially if it contacts the bit of a bridle when the horse is ridden. Canine teeth are usually present in males more so than females. Ruminants, like goats and cows, are unique in that they do not have upper incisors or canines. Similar to horses, they lack first premolars, and they have three premolars and three molars per quadrant. They are also unique in that they have both brachydont and hypsodont teeth. Their lower incisors and canines are brachydont, while their cheek teeth are hypsodont. What is the correct numbering for a canine tooth? The correct answer is A. Remember the rule of thumb. O4 is canine and O9 is first molar. Therefore, O1 is a first incisor and 10 is a second molar. If you keep in mind the rules for the triad and system, you'll notice there's no such thing as tooth number 24. Number this tooth. It is a permanent upper right fourth premolar in a dog. The correct answer is D. Because the tooth is in the upper right quadrant, we can say it is in the first quadrant. And because it is a permanent tooth, then the quadrant is number one. The arrow pointed to the fourth premolar, so the correct number on the tooth is 08. Therefore, the number for the tooth, according to the triadin system, is 108. This concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching.